So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again. And in this video, I recently bought a 2002 Teague V-Drive wakeboarding boat. I got it pretty cheap because of the condition it was in. One of the main things that was wrong with it was the upholstery. So I removed all the panels, got my upholstery guy to reupholster it, and then installed it again. So we're gonna go over helpful hints and how to do this. So let's get to it. So here's a view of some of the upholstery before we got it redone and how bad a shape it was in. Now my last boat was a 2001, I had bought it new and I never let it go without a cover. And when I sold it in 2020, it was the original upholstery and there was only two minor rips in the entire boat. So if you keep your boat covered, if it's outside, the upholstery will last. And trust me, this was about three grand to get this stuff redone. So you wanna take care of it and keep that boat covered at all times. Now I did go through about 10 boat covers in that 18 years that I had that boat. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I would have to buy one every year and a half to two and a half years on average. I would just buy the cheap Walmart boat covers for 50 to 60 bucks. I had bought an expensive one at one point, and it only lasts me three years, and it was three times the money. So I did spend probably five to 600 bucks on boat covers, but that beats the crap out of $3,000 in upholstery work. Now, I was by myself when I pulled these panels off, so I wasn't able to get video of me pulling them off. And that was more complicated than putting them back on. However, I do have good videos of me putting them back on and I'm going to explain some tricks to use to take them off if you have issues as well. So this is actually me putting one of the panels back on. However, the concept is the same to remove it. I used my thumb to pry up the cushion at the main seam. That's where all my screws were located that held all these panels on this boat in. So one of the reasons this was such a pain to get the upholstery out of this boat is because the boat was 18 years old and they tend to use stainless steel screws because they are very water resistant. However, they are not very tough and they will strip out easily. So out of the probably 30 screws that I had to take off to get all the panels off of the boat, about a handful of them did strip out the head and I had to use other means to get them out. So what I ended up having to do is cut some of the upholstery back which didn't really matter because I was getting it reupholstered anyways. When I did that, I just barely cut the upholstery and making sure not to damage the foam or anything else on the panel. Once I peeled back the upholstery, I was able to take a pair of pliers and either snap off the head of the screw so I could just pull the panel off or I was able to unscrew it with the pliers on the head of the screw. If I had snapped off the head of the screw, once I pulled the panel off, I would use the pliers to unthread the rest of the screw out of the boat. So on this boat, all of the screws were located in a major seam on all the panels. You can see the screw holes there, and this held true for every panel on this boat. So before realizing I should just cut the upholstery and use a pair of pliers, I tried tugging on this panel a little bit because I only had one screw left, and I ended up snapping that plastic, so it had to be repaired by the upholstery guy. So once this happened, that's when I realized I should cut the upholstery back and use that pair of pliers to unscrew or snap the heads off. So the things to watch for when you're trying to reinstall these panels, at first I tried using the same screw holes. That just didn't end up being practical and was a big waste of time. The other thing I realized is that at first I would try and put the front screw of the panel in and then go all the way to the other side of the panel and put the back one in, then fill in the middle. However, what happened is I would end up binding up the screws in the middle and I realized that it would be easier to start at one side and then just work it down and have somebody else hold the panel in the position it needed to be in as you worked your way down the panel screwing it in. I also recommend using a drill to tighten the screws so you can set the torque settings so you do not over tighten and pull it through the material holding the panel. Another thing I would highly recommend is not trying to reuse the old screws Again, they're stainless steel and they're not very tough. They might break on you going back in. So I just went and bought a whole new box of screws for six or seven bucks. I bought Torx instead of Phillips because I figured they have a less likely chance of stripping out. And I did get stainless steel because it is the most water resistant screw you can get. Another thing that I quickly learned was at first I would put the panels and try and get the screws all started in the panel before putting it up into place. That ended up being a big waste of time as well. Once you have somebody helping you hold it up in place and you get the first screw started, they will just push right through the plastic and the fiberglass of the boat. 
Another thing I recommend doing that I didn't do, and I ended up having to pull a couple panels back off and redoing them, is make sure you set all your panels up into place and make sure they're gonna fit appropriately. After doing the two side panels, I went to put the back seat in place and it would not fit. So I had to readjust one of the side panels and move it forward a little bit. So keep that in mind if you're doing something like this. I should have thought of it and I did not. Then I had to be super careful trying to pull that other side panel back off without ruining the brand new upholstery to move it forward so that that back cushion would fit properly. Now the only panels that did have something besides screws holding them was two of the front seat panels. It actually had a total of three screws and then this bolt that you were able to access from one of the storage compartments on each side. There was a couple sections of the upholstery that were still in good enough shape where I didn't want to spend the money to fix them. However, I added a couple extra screws because they were coming out of place. So this is one of the three cushions that was still good enough to keep. However, it was a pain to get down into place. So I took the shock off. Usually a small flathead screwdriver and you pry off either a plastic or a metal tab and then it will pop off with ease. So after removing the shock, I got it out of the way and then went ahead and took all the screws off on both sides of the hinge. The reason I did both sides is I wanted to flip the hinge around, which changed where the screw holes were. So I went into fresh material when screwing it back together on both sides. So I re-anchored the hinge on the cushion. So I put one screw in and tried it a little higher up, realized that it wasn't high enough, took it back out, moved it up a little bit more and tried it in another hole, tried closing it again to make sure we were good and then proceeded to anchor the rest of the screws in to hold it securely. Then I just popped the nitrogen shock back on and the extra cap on it as well. So on this panel here, all the screws were held in from the back side underneath these panels. The back cushion was by far the easiest to take in and out. The only thing I had to do was remove the battery shut off to access a couple of the screws that were underneath it. One thing to keep in mind as well on boats, especially older ones, they use wood a lot and the wood can rot out, which could lead to extra costs as well. Which I believe to be the case with these two top covers because when I was putting the screws back in them, they did seem a little weak. So I had to use a little bit longer screw and almost put them in at an angle to get them to bite good. If you end up doing something like that, make sure you cannot feel them with your toes so you do not puncture the upholstery. I wish my upholstery guy would have said something about the wood. I would have cut out new pieces of plywood before he put the new upholstery on. So as far as the captain's chair goes, guys, uh, my upholstery guy said it would be cheaper just to buy a seat than to try and redo this one because it is very labor intensive. Plus the upholstery is still expensive. So right here, I removed the seat from the boat. I'm just taking the four bolts that were holding the base plate to the chair off of it so I can put it on the new seat. So the captain's chair, I ended up getting off of Amazon for like 200 bucks. It's a pretty nice seat, it's pretty comfortable. One thing I did not consider is I didn't think the height of the old chair to the new one would be that different because the bottom cushion of the old chair compared to the new one was about three to four inches higher. So therefore I had to make a spacer block to put between the base plate and the captain's chair so I would be at the same height as the old chair. This was not expected. So I ended up having to use some two by fours to make a three inch spacer block between the chair itself and the base plate. Then painted it with some semi-gloss paint that I had left over. Then I went and got some four inch quarter by 20 thread bolts. Now that might differ depending on what seat you get and threaded those in with lock washers and washers on it. The spacer plate worked good. It was plenty strong enough once it was in the boat and I've already gone to the lake and it has not had an issue. Now I did use my regular drill to tighten these bolts down so I could set the torque setting so I didn't rip the threads out of the base of the seat. Here's a good view of the captain's chair after we installed it. And that came out pretty good. The one thing I do like about this chair is it is a little smaller than the original. So if you lean it a little bit, you can walk through to the front, which you could not do before. So I ended up reupholstering this whole side panel, the whole back cushion all the way across, this side panel, both top covers, and then the entire front bow. So here's a view of the front. I am still waiting for one more piece that goes up front there. I forgot to give it to him, that's why I don't have it back yet. 
but everything came out pretty good. We have been to the lake, so there is a couple dirty spots on it. Hope this video gave you guys some good information and it helped you out. If so, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, and hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.